So here's the video of uh, Villa Rezzola. You, do you see the video? Do you see the picture, Alessandra? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Okay. So here we are. We have seen the villa from outside and also inside, and uh, with this, uh, we are uh, let's approach it little by little uh, from the, this beautiful garden. And here it is, it's coming to the site. But we should bear in mind that the entrance is, has always been the one from the street uh, looking towards the little town or village of Pugliola. So through the gate you enter here, you, you used to enter by the carriage, by a carriage. And um, this is the main facade overlooking the village. And this one is the one with the, the long term towards the sea and of course the path of the garden and here it's the facade towards the street and the its uh, form uh, dates back to the beginning of the 20th century and is mostly the output of the intervention of a couple of English people the Cochrane um, who, who lived here since uh, nine, the 1900s. But before them, in, in around 1860-1870, George Humphrey um, was, uh, lived here in the villa and uh, he was uh, a, an Englishman, who, uh, an engineer, who took part in the big campaign of road construction and railways contra construction in Italy. He was a good friend of Cavour and he was a supporter of Garibaldi and he had many economical uh, in interests in, in Italy. And he also um, created the shipyard of Muggiano, which is just nearby uh, the, the town um, of Lerici. So he used to live in this villa for um, some decades, uh, but uh, at the same time, uh, the real owner was a, a member of a, a noble family, local noble family, whose name is Botti. And we have some data about this family because one of the uh, heirs, uh, the descendant, has written a book about them, has found some letters. And so we get to know something part of the everyday life of this uh, noble couple in Villa Rezzola. 
uh, at around 1870s, more or less. The lady, uh, the owner, uh, her name was Elisa Ricci, and she got married to the nobleman, uh, Orazio Botti. This is the wedding invitation. And you can see it is in September 1872. Now, Orazio Botti, the husband, was uh, in his uh, 40s, whereas uh, um, Elisa Ricci was only 17. Still, and this is a portrait of the husband, uh, still the, the couple was a very close one. The, the love uh, was, uh, their union was successful. And we have a very tender letter that she writes to her mother from the villa in 1878, so six years after the wedding, where she still shows the enthusiasm of the first days. And she tells her that uh, she and her husband feel very good and we don't miss our everyday stroll. We do take a swim too, but recently we had had to stop because of the rough sea. Still, I'm sure we will soon resume our habits. So this is the peaceful and pleasant life that, that the two led in the villa in the second half of the 19th century. And the um, brother of um, Lady Botti um, designed, uh, drew, drew a watercolor uh, from the villa overlooking the, the town of Lerici and the castle of Lerici. This is exactly the same view you can enjoy today if you, as you enter the, the house. And this is what you, you can see. So it, it's really uh, striking. Uh, this is a, a, a picture of the villa in the 20s because um, at the, the end of the 19th century, the Bottis, the two Bottis, uh, moved to Pisa in Tuscany and um, sold the villa to this English couple, the Cochrane. And uh, we know um, many things about the Cochrane, Cochrane because the, um, two writers has uh, dedicated their studies, uh, Briars and uh, in, uh, an Australian um, scholar and uh, his fellow in, uh, in, in Liguria, Fabio Rolla, uh, dedicated themselves to the researches on uh, these uh, inhabitants. And here they are, um, William Percy Cochrane and his wife, Helen Lavinia Shaw. He was uh, extremely wealthy. And so when he inherited his uh, part of endowment, he moved to Italy and to Liguria because uh, he was looking for a, a, a good climate for his health. And they first uh, uh, settled in Menton in uh, south of France. And then they fell in love with the little uh, town of uh, Lerici and bought Villa Rezzola. So uh, what we see of the villa is uh, mostly the output of their work on, on the building and on the garden, for example. And so they brought uh, the English taste to Liguria. Uh, what we see now, it's very little typical of Liguria. It's much more uh, typical of the English taste in Liguria, the sort of uh, col colonial taste. For example, they added this uh, Liberty Tower, uh, maybe on the base of some military building, medieval military building, we have very little traces of. And they added this entrance here. Originally, the house was a sort of a cube, a very squared house, very simple. This is the typical Ligurian house. Then the Cochrane added a tower, the side wings, and this adjusting, uh, adjusting uh, um, entrance above which they uh, inserted a terrace. So they really wanted to enjoy the good climate of the place through the lodges, the terraces, the large windows. And we can make a comparison between our villa and the one uh, built by the, the famous uh, Hungary family in, uh, in the opposite side of Liguria. And you see more or less the same uh, um, features. So terraces, uh, towers, lodges. So the aim was the same, that one of trying to interwind the building with the nature, the, with the outside nature. So this is the view from the sea, the, the facade toward the sea. And this is uh, one of the many watercolors um, produced by, drawn by 
Lavinia, who was a very good artist, uh, that um, portrays very faithfully the villa as it used to be and exactly as it is today. The wonderful view from the top of the tower now and in uh, Lavinia's, Helen Lavinia's time, looking, Helen Lavinia's overlooks the little village of Ullola. And the garden, which nowadays has been overgrown, but uh, still um, maintains the original, its original English scheme. And uh, many famous hosts uh, came, visited the couple. Among them, we have uh, the novelist Emma Orchi, the British with Hungarian origins, the author of a very famous uh, novel book. And also, um, and she got, she fell in love with the place, seeing this villa, and decided to build her own villa. And the same happened to um, the Admiral uh, Reginald Bacon, who, who, who had already built his own villa nearby. And uh, we have a, a, some nice lines by Emma Orji um, um, retracing or describing the garden as it used to look uh, with the Cochrane, uh, under the Cochrane uh, period. So Retzola enjoys one of the most beautiful views on God's earth. And then there were the gardens of Retzola along the hillside, a glow when we saw the magnificent Eglantine rose, rose running subdued over terraces and balustrades. The Judas tree planting their crimson bloom between sober gray, gray olive trees. There was this mixture of the local plants and which were gray and the olive trees and the, the bloomings of the flowers that were sometimes were imported by the English people. And uh, the brilliant green of the palms, again, they were imported by British, uh, swaying gracefully. And all around meadows of violets and crocuses and poets, Narcissus, exhausting themselves, as it were, with their sweetness and humility in the midst of such splendid vegetation. It was truly enchanting, and we really believe it was. And this is uh, what we can see today, part of the tale of Emma Orchis still exists with the wisteria that give form to a porch and the interior, which maintains part of the Cochrane's uh, um, form, the Cochrane style, the main entrance. And the furniture we can see today don't belong to the Cochrane's, it was added later on, we will see about it. But this room, the music room, has maintained perfectly the English style. Nothing uh, of Liguria you can see here, but maybe you are reminded of some uh, English mansions and castles with the wooden paneling, with this squared um, ceiling, and with this uh, adjusting um, windows, uh, which are sort of, are not bow windows, but sort of, and certainly uh, keep a very strict dialogue with uh, the natural, natural side. And the dining room with this typical uh, English ceiling, um, and the, the sitting room, which is not so outstanding inside, but it's outstanding for the wonderful view on the outside landscape. This is the facade toward the sea. And uh, this terrace uh, is connected exactly uh, to the windows of the sitting room. And this is the view, the wonderful view that overlooks. Here you have uh, the, the village the town of um, Porto Venere and the island of the Palmaria, which is now a park, and the little island of Tim, Tino. All these are part of the world heritage. And uh, among uh, the guests of, uh, um, of the Cochrane, we can find D.H. Lawrence with his wife, um, who 
who um, attended this house came frequently to Villa Rezzola. At the beginning, uh, Lawrence was not so much keen on William Cochrane because this man was a bit a boaster. He, he, he kept talking about his money and his wealth and uh, Lawrence didn't feel uh, great sympathy for this man. But uh, on, on the contrary, he liked very much Helen and her skill at drawing. And little by little, they became friends. And uh, Lawrence will uh, rent a house in the nearby village and stay for a while too in this place. And Helen will portraits, will uh, represent um, um, Lawrence house, Lawrence cottage, she says, and the Lawrence table. And this is a drawing by Helen of, we have already getting, got to know the port of Lerici with the little castle of Lerici. Villa Rezzola is here more or less up, up the hill. And the view is exactly what you can see still today. And she also uh, was interested in life of the people who lived in the villages who were very humble people. They lived on uh, fishing and on growing uh, olive trees and making oil, but they lacked any sort of uh, um, goodness, good, good sort of uh, um, modern uh, um, structure for their life. So the two Cochrane provided the village with the water and um, new houses, new stables, uh, even a kindergarten, a nursery. So they were very generous with the local people. Even if um, the fact that Cochrane was an Englishman and that he was uh, so uh, um, friends with uh, important admirals, important politicians, uh, this aspects uh, made people, local people, very suspicious. And he was accused of being a spy. And uh, he had to defend himself in a trial, but he was um, said to be innocent at the end. Um, they also, during World War I, the Cochrane, uh, the Cochrane, the Cochrane, um, built a military hospital in Sardana, which was run directly, personally by Helen, who was a, a part of the Red Cross. And their uh, help to the local soldiers was gratefully uh, testified in their guest books. But after World War I, uh, something happened between the two of them and um, they were not so united anymore as they used to be uh, until uh, William will get on his uh, luxurious car and uh, will decide to leave Villa Rezzola and go back to Menton in France to his original house where he will be uh, nursed by, by a, a young lady, maybe there was a liaison, and, um, and at the end, he will uh, die there. Whereas uh, Helen prefers her uh, more uh, traditional carriage with the donkey and remains in Rezzola and maintains the, keeps, uh, keeps uh, the garden, takes care of the garden um, until, um, sorry, until uh, 1935, when after the uh, ex military expansion of uh, Italy in Northern Africa, the relations between it Italy and um, England were a bit um, not so friendly as they used to be. And uh, being an English lady in Italy was not so safe anymore. She didn't feel at ease and the fascism uh, the fascist party was taken power more and more. And uh, at the end, in 1935, she felt it was time for her to go back to her country. And she she sold the villa. And so we get in, in touch with the last owners, the one that will uh, decide to donate the villa to our foundation. And they are Mara Braida Carnevale, who is a Venetian um, young lady, beautiful uh, lady, and uh, later on her daughter, uh, Pupa, uh, Pupa Mignati. Her name is Maria Adele, but she has always uh, been uh, nicknamed uh, Pupa. And uh, so we are now working on uh, what they have left in the villa, trying to retrace and reconstruct their 
um, the, the phases of, of their lives and to understand what kind of people they were. And so also through documents, uh, pictures, and the, the enormous uh, and very not organized archive we are working on, um, we are getting to know many things. And especially the figures, the character of Mara is extremely interesting because this lady is a very strong-willed woman, what we now, some people tend to say, a, a, a warrior. She was, she was a very, um, a, a woman who knew what she wanted. And uh, here are some of her relatives, but especially the figures was very important to her, the figures of her father, their name, uh, their family name was Braida, and they were very rich. They uh, lived, we have to leave now uh, Liguria and go to the east of um, Italy, to the Veneto region, because they used to live uh, in, um, in a town nearby Venice, just very close to Venice. And this was the villa where Mara Carnevale, the last owner of Villa Rizzola, uh, was born and was grown up. So you can see the state, uh, the prestige of this family. Uh, these are the interiors that now have been transformed into an hotel. So we, we can't really know what the house looked like originally, but still it, it, it can give us uh, the, the feeling of uh, the, the richness. Their friends were the most important uh, bourgeois or aristocratic people in Venice. You might have heard of Vittorio Cini, who was the founder of the Cini Foundation in Venice, where, where there are now many important uh, exhibitions. And uh, his friend, uh, Giuseppe Volpi, who was the founder of the famous uh, Venice Movie Festival, who was, uh, as you can see, uh, in strict uh, contact uh, with uh, the King of Italy. And so um, being uh, so well um, how, uh, in the middle of such important uh, friendship, Mara uh, started her life as a grown up and um, gets in touch with the man who will become her husband, who, was, who came from Piedmont in Northern West Italy and who was a lieutenant, lieutenant of the army. And he passed through the Veneto region in, uh, in during World War I and they got to, to know each other you know, on that uh, occasion. And he was deeply in love with her. We have a, a short uh, dedication to her where he says, uh, to my a small, beloved, adored Mara with uh, uh, endless affection. And this affection was uh, um, as much as uh, the, the one that Mara uh, demonstrated to him as well. So they got married uh, in around 1920 and uh, moved to Rome in a beautiful palace. And um, where Mara uh, gave birth to a very uh, worldly and fashionable uh, salon. Her sitting room was attended by the most important VIP people in, uh, in Rome. And these are portraits of this uh, wonderful uh, woman. And this is a very tender picture of the, the two of them with their newborn child, uh, Maria Dele, uh, called Pupa. But this uh, beautiful love had, has uh, a very quick end because um, uh, the husband, Carlo, will soon die in 1922. And uh, he will leave uh, Mara with her title of countess, but as a widow with a, a, a small child in a, in a hard world, and she will show how powerful and uh, and uh, determined she was in her life always. And she will write to her later on. She will write to her daughter that uh, you understand that the man you have in front of is your man only on the day in which all things that seem difficult with other men seem simple and normal with him. She keeps um, teaching her daughter how to recognize the right man, how to live the right life, how to um, choose the right friends. And she always mentions her, her husband with great affection and, uh, and love. 
and he she will write to her daughter, your father was the only man who inspired this feeling. With him only could I have been happy because I trusted him more than anything else in the world. And because I was proud of him in any sense as a man, as a hero, as a gentleman. So this lady is a woman who really feels her life as an epic, as something extraordinary, but had to live entirely with all her body and soul. And um, she goes to Villa to Lerici. She, she feels in love with the villa and she buys it in 930, 1935, uh, enjoying the same views that the Cochrane had enjoyed uh, previously and um, inserting her own uh, uh, furnishing in the Cochrane's rooms, as we can see here. And among the pieces of furniture, I would like to point out a, um, a wheel, a spinning wheel, which was given to her by Gandhi himself. When he came to Rome in 1931, um, he was um, hosted in, in the stadium where he held a, a speech, but he was hosted in Mara's uh, house. And uh, you know that the spinning wheel is a, is a symbol of the independence of India. We can see uh, uh, Gandhi in, in Attenborough's movie while he's working on the spinning wheel. And so he uh, donated one of the, the wheels to, to Mara and it's still um, uh, preserved in the villa. And so we see uh, the friends of Mara, Giuseppe Volpi, now in the company of Mussolini. Um, there was much enthusiasm for Mussolini at the beginning, and Mara was one of the uh, strongest uh, supporters of the fascist party. She was uh, convinced that uh, Italy deserved to have a very in, a, a primary, uh, a very important role in Europe, and only with Mussolini, Italy could gain and uh, uh, achieve um, an important role. So she was ready and willing to work to, to help uh, this political, um, increase this political growth of, uh, of, the, of Italy. And she, uh, meanwhile, she raises her, she grows her daughter who be will become a, a young girl and uh, she will have many important friends uh, as usual. So admirals, politicians, uh, ministers uh, and uh, important bishops. Uh, uh, Hudal was a, a bishop who was very linked to the German um, the Nazi Germany, uh, sure that the Nazis could find found a new nation founded on uh, um, Christianity. And she also hosted the ambassador of Germany in her uh, salon in, uh, in Rome, and he was fascinated by this woman. And she will write to her daughter, uh, Dear Pupa, she is in, in Spain at this moment in 1942. And she says, I feel I have a spiritual task to carry out here more than elsewhere. I, you, you smile because you think that my sipping tea, eating pineapple and buying fur coats will not solve the world crisis. But what she meant is that she will do her best to, 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 to take part in the political and in the historical events of the time. And the occasion comes when um, one of uh, Hitler's uh, men uh, will come to Italy with the task of uh, growing a good uh, fertile ground where to build the new, a new um, link uh, between Germany and Italy. And he will be one of the frequent guests of Mara Carnevale, and she will become friend of him and of his wife, Marta. And the, the two of them, the two Germans, will come to Villa Rezzola more than once. And all this is uh, written in a book that traces the history of uh, uh, Haushofer. Um, and how Zofer is so grateful to her and esteems her so much that he invites Mara 
uh, among the most important hierarchs people in, uh, um, in Italy to attend the National Congress of the Nazi Party in Nuremberg in 1938. And on this occasion, Mara will shake hands with Hitler and she will be thrilled by, by the thing, by the event. But uh, World War II uh, burst out and the two, the woman, and Mara and her daughter will have to face very difficult uh, moments and situation. And um, uh, also at Villa Rezzola in Lerici, the villa we are talking about, uh, because uh, dark days uh, are waiting for this villa. And um, uh, an important letter by the maid of Mara will uh, tell her how the maid and the and the daughter Pupa worked hard in the villa and wept while preparing the handover of the villa. The house is now perfect and the dog is already under the soldier's custody. So what's happening? The villa is being requisitioned by the National Royal uh, Navy and the Admiral Aimone of the Savoy family will live in Villa Rezzola and will make Villa, sorry, Rezzola, will make Villa Rezzola the headquarter of the Royal Air uh, Navy. And a very important, an important episode of the World War II will take place exactly in the sitting room of Villa Rezzola. And we have um, the witness of this episode in a, in a book that was written that one of the people who were there. And uh, in, in the archive, we have a note on the paper that uh, um, bears the, um, the name of the 10th uh, um, Navy Brigade. And the 10th uh, Brigade was a parallel brigade of the fascist army, and uh, which was headed by the Prince uh, uh, Valerio Borghese, who was a very wealthy uh, man, who was uh, decidedly on the west, on the right wing, and he was a strong supporter of the fascist, uh, fascist uh, um, party, and he had his own army uh, um, to support uh, the political ideas of the fascist party. So um, here we see him in his car with his soldiers, and here again with his troops. And a very uh, important episode occurs in the villa um, during the days of the armistice when uh, Italy changes side and uh, leaves uh, Germany in order to, um, to stay on the uh, allies side on, on the American and English side. And um, these writers who was present at the, the villa in those days will remember the, um, the event in his book when after getting to know about the armistice, nobody knew what to do. There was a, a, a confusion everywhere in Italy. It was a, a revolution in Italy after being a, a supporter of, of the Germany uh, changing so, so decidedly the, the side. So uh, Valerio Borghese, what we, we call him the Black Prince, uh, rushes toward to Villa Rezzola where uh, uh, Aimone da Osta, the admiral, uh, was staying, and we'll ask him, what will we do? And so uh, I'll, I read the, uh, uh, a quote from the book about this episode. So the two of them were trying to get in touch with Rome, and they, they keep calling and calling Rome. And at last, after long silences, uh, the major, General Druelle, answered, and they asked him, what should I do? And he answered evasively, nothing new. Since 8 p.m., we have been in a state of armistice. At that point, Borghese put down the phone and looked at Aimone and told him, everyone must remain at its own place and wait for orders. For the moment, there is nothing else to do. Instead, the Duke replied, this is fine for you, dear Borghese. You have your military duties, but not for me. I also have dynastic duties. 
My place is next to the king, and therefore I must immediately reach the sovereign. And so the two separate, but also politically separate, because um, Aimone will uh, go to southern Italy to, to become the head of um, the, the fleet uh, uh, with, uh, with the American uh, um, soldiers, and uh, Valerio Borghese will uh, will side with the, the German um, soldiers, believing, strongly believing that Italy didn't have the right to betray the nation uh, that was friends to Ita friend to Italy, which was Germany. And uh, in this dramatic moment, uh, the young pupa, young daughter who is uh, 20, has to go to the villa and trying to save what she could during this uh, terrible moment of invasion when the German tanks were invading the, the coast of Liguria. And um, after her, her quick uh, uh, passage, um, a new uh, captain uh, will uh, um, uh, requisition the villa and uh, a, a German uh, captain and um, we can see him here on the left exactly on the terrace of Villa Rezzola which we have seen many times before. Now uh, Rudolf Jacobs, this uh, captain of the um, German uh, genius, the, um, let's say that um, branch of the army which was in charge of building bridges and uh, fortification in order to prevent um, the arrival of the American troops from the sea. So he, he was an architect actually, he was not a man of war at all. And after um, an year that he was staying in, in the villa in Liguria, after having seen um, the tragedy of the war and uh, what uh, Germany soldiers were doing in Italy and believing in, in the right of Italy to become independent and to be free from Germany and not believing in, in his own country anymore, um, he decides to take off his uniform and to, um, to join the Italian partisan. And he leaves, he's uh, thinking that he leaves a young woman, a young wife in Germany with his two children. Nevertheless, he joins the, um, the partisans. And uh, this is a very beautiful uh, memory that one of the partisans uh, recalls about the encounter of the two of them, the meeting of the two of them. And he says, in the dark, I couldn't see his profile. We only shook hands strongly for a quick instant, that was enough. The natural distrust that we always felt towards the Germans disappeared. Spontaneous sympathy, struggle, friendship, likeness of spirit and thought linked me to him. The shake of our hands was sufficient. And uh, um, Rudolf, uh, Rudolf Jacob, sorry. Um, all this is written in a, in a book that has in, investigated this part of our history. And uh, Rudolf Jacobs proposes to assault uh, the headquarters of the Black Brigade, Le, Le Brigate Nere, uh, which was a, a part of the fascist army in the near town of uh, Sarzana. But during this assault, he was killed and he died in Sarzana. Um, struggling for uh, for Italy liberty, and he is still remembered in um, in on the wall of the the town hall uh, building. So after this episode. Um, Luckily, the war is over and uh, people uh, find again they're willing to, to, to go back to normal life. Uh, Lerici little by little becomes a touristic place and uh, Villa Rezzola reopens its shutters and the two ladies, uh, uh, Mara Carnevale and her daughter, come back to the villa where they stay for summer times. And generally, they live in Rome but every summer is spent here in their beloved villa. 
and um, during this uh, happy period, uh, Mara, who is now a grown-up woman, uh, meets her um, her husband Piero Mignati, who is a bourgeois who uh, works in in the court, and together they live together in Rezzola in Rome. But also they moved; they went to go. They went to live in Paris, and then they stayed for a long time in the Portuguese India. We still have some Portuguese Indian um, furniture in the house, and so they. The new uh, chapter has uh, um, finds a new life in the villa, and they get married in 1950 in Villa Rezzola degli Olivi in Verici. So um, the garden is under their cure again, and uh, the mother Mara goes to, to, to see them uh, frequently, and we can now see the interiors of the house that has preserved the English first. Uh, um, form the English first uh, impression, and uh, but but now are completely furnished by the the Venetian family, Venetian Roman family, and uh, so they brings uh, their uh, Venetian furniture, looking like eighteenth uh, century furniture, but more recently made because uh, a relative of, of them was had a little production of uh, stylish uh, furniture here it is the classical cabinet of the venetian but made uh, in more recent time and here we have the terrace uh, lived in again and the sitting room um, mara's uh, bedroom and again, uh, the mother's bedroom, you, you see her in, in her portrait. And also we have found the, the very dress she was wearing when she was portrayed. And also her ring. And here she is with her daughter in the Villa Rezzola and in, on, on the terrace of Villa Rezzola, uh, but she, where she will stay for many summers uh, until uh, when she dies in 1964. And so the um, Pupa and her husband will continue their stay at the villa, uh, even if during the 60s and the 70s, unfortunately, the local government uh, will uh, requisition uh, part of the, of the park. And uh, so they, they are not connected to the sea anymore. And they, they built this uh, sportive uh, center of Lerici. And uh, um, one of the last wishes of uh, the, the mother, Mara, was uh, um, writing to her daughter. She said, uh, I wish that in the right moment of your life, you will find the partner you deserve. And remember that he has to be handsome because I want beautiful grandchildren. And unfortunately, this wish will not be fulfilled because the two of them will not have children, but we have a very a pleasant life, nevertheless, in their villa, where they will uh, have many friends. Uh, they will have a sort of a cultural um, sitting room, a cultural salon. And uh, among the guests, we can find the famous uh, uh, movie director, Luchino Visconti, the, pu the publisher, Mario Spagnol, the publisher, Valentino Bompiani and uh, the art historian Salvatore Settis, who, who has been for many years um, lived in one of the service uh, building of, uh, of the property. And so um, see, until the very last days, they enjoyed once again, the beautiful uh, site, the beautiful view uh, on, on the Gulf, on the famous Gulf of the Poets, until in, um, in 2001, Piero pass, uh, passed over, and later on in, in the 2020, uh, Mara, um, Maria, sorry, Pupa Maria uh, joins him, uh, but uh, only after having decided to leave the old property to the foundation, and so um, here comes the foundation that tries to uh, reorganize uh, the park and to understand all the many works that this place need uh, to, to have, to, 
all the cures that need to receive. And um, we, however, even if there are many restorations still to be done, uh, all restoration has still to be done, um, we wanted to open it to the public uh, because it was such a beautiful place and so beloved also by people in, living nearby that it was right to open its doors to the public, and which we did uh, last June. And we started, however, little uh, restoration, uh, the most urgent restoration on, on the pieces, on, also on the spinning wheel uh, of Gandhi. And um, still many, many other works uh, have to be done and need, need uh, much uh, ec economical support. Uh, but um, certainly, uh, little by little, we will uh, give back uh, the villa its original uh, uh, splendid look and uh, open again the gates to the public, as exactly as uh, Kupa herself used to do in the past. Thank you. Well, thank you, Lucia. Gosh, this was uh, really beautiful, a real uh, journey through history. You must have read a lot of history books uh, to prepare for, for this and to study this property. It uh, was really, really interesting. And um, so I hope that our guests today will, um, will decide to come to Italy and, and to visit it, and we'll be happy to uh, meet you there. Uh, it would be lovely. Uh, and bring your friends also. Uh, while I pull up uh, um, some final slides, I would also like to, um, to remind um, everybody that uh, FI can, um, can continue its mission to, uh, um, can bring forward its mission, um, thanks to the help of uh, its members and, uh, and donors. And I would like to invite you all to contribute to the level you feel more appropriate. Um, and we're open to discuss with any of you, uh, should you want to support FI with a special donation for a specific project, uh, we do think of uh, bespoke benefits and uh, recognition. Uh, I would like also to remind you all that uh, we do have uh, international groups that have been set up in, in other countries like in the UK um, and in, in the US and in Switzerland. Uh, here are some um, uh, details, contact details to get in touch with them. For example, I know that uh, all of these groups are preparing for, for tours to Italy to visit our properties. And uh, here are some QR codes uh, so that you can use, uh, for example, to join FI UK or to donate. And, and also for, for Friends of FI in the United States, uh, we have uh, a, a very interesting group of people who support our work with specific project and restorations. And also for uh, in Switzerland for FI Swiss in uh, Geneva, especially. Um, we will be, um, here's one last view uh, of, uh, of, uh, from Villa Rezzola. It's been uh, wonderful to, uh, to go through this property with you, Lucia. Uh, we will see you again. Uh, we are preparing for another uh, webinar in the fall about uh, um, Villa San Luca in Ospedaletti. Um, and we, it's still in Liguria, uh, but it's also property that we have been uh, that we have opened very recently so uh, you might want to think about coming to see it um, and it holds it holds the uh, Laura collection from the name of um, of their donors uh, and it's really one of Italy's most impressive collections of applied art right and uh, um, and it includes about 6,000 uh, pieces of Italian, European, and Chinese furniture, porcelain, uh, sculptures, European and Oriental Maiolica, and bronze and silverware. Um, so, and Egyptian antiquities. Uh, um, Lucia has studied it also very well. So, we're looking forward to hearing everything uh, from her. Um, so, um, well, thank you very much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed our tour and um, we wish you all a very nice uh, Easter period and uh, summer.
and please uh, do give us a call if you come and visit. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you, Alessandra. Thank you, Lucia. Goodbye to everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.